Okay, so we're going to talk about an eviction that happened on Monday in Fibsborough. Um, what, what was the name of the place that was occupied? Um, it's called Butternurse Squat. <laughs> okay, and that was what, in Fibsborough, Fibsborough Road? Uh, it's a Villa Park, which is kind of behind Mountjoy Prison. Um, okay, and so let's talk a bit about the background to the building. Yeah, How long have people been in there for? Um, I think it's been spotted for about, what, like four, four months yeah, or so? Yeah, like end of October. Um, and it'd been empty for at least two years, I think, was what, yeah. what the neighbours were saying. Yeah, and, th- and in this case, it seems to be empty because of uh, a planning dispute. The uh, the owners were trying to knock it down altogether, apparently, to get access to a, a warehouse or something. And Yeah, essentially, they were, they were planning to demolish this house. Um, there's like a vacant warehouse plot behind the house, which is owned by the same people who own the house and the adjacent ba- uh, Thunders Bakery. Um, and they were essentially planning to demolish the house, which very, very little wrong with it. It's a beautiful house um, to basically build a throughway to that to that warehouse. Um, and um, yeah, so the the owner of the building was um, this guy called Sylvester Rabbit, and and his family appear to be some kind of kind of like a catering dynasty. Um, they own. They have their own property company. They have uh, a catering company that supplies to chippers and stuff. And they seem to own Thunder's Bakery and this place, uh, Little Italy on North King Street. Um, so they seem to be kind of like multi-millionaires. Like it says on the company's register that uh, Sylvester Rabbit is director of over 28 companies. Okay, so and um, in terms of the events of the day itself, so what happened is the um, the... Private security and cops turned up on on the early well, in the morning, uh, was it? So, do you want to? So I wasn't here in December, but in December they came one day. Um, I guess they had sent someone to check on the house, and we were there. And then they called on um, Mr. Rabbit, <laughs> <laughs> and he came and called the Garda. There was the kind of usual Garda saying you're not supposed to be there and um people inside asserted their rights um we made them cite the sections and then the garda present which may have been different garda i'm not sure kind of were like yeah um we obviously don't know the law well enough we're gonna go away but hey we'll be back later and then a month or so later, so this Monday, um, they come back with Mr. Rabbit, who um, said last week through someone, and apparently said he delivered a letter, but that never happened, because we never got a letter, said that they were going to do construction. We we thought, hey, if that's true, then they're going to show us some paperwork. They just come yesterday, Monday, and Garda, five or six workers in high rises, they start demolishing um, the back wall of the property, which is in the garden between the house and Thunder's Bakery, which Mr. Rabbit owns. And do you want to continue? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And they come around the front. The Garda don't actually do and don't have any equipment to break into a house. So the workers um, bring a sledgehammer and just kind of start like knocking the door, knocking the windows. There's people inside. There's, there's someone like right behind the door, um, and kind of like recklessly, completely putting the person behind the door's life at risk. Like sledge, use a sledgehammer to knock down the door, and. And there's loads of video footage to prove everything that happened. And the Garda never cited any kind of any section. They didn't even bother to section 11 us, never mind reciting section 11. <laughs> it, it just kind of seemed that it, you could have almost thought that Mr. Rabbit like gave them a few thousand on, on the sly. And they're like, OK, we'll just kind of watch while the workers do the work. And let's maybe try and help the workers out a little bit. Yeah, it, it seems like the, the Gardaí, particularly from Mountjoy Garda Station, um, are perfectly happy to carry out uh, legal evictions. Like they, they don't, they're not interested in quoting any kind of criminal law. They've, they've no interest in court orders or anything like that. 
all they which as far as we understand is is illegal um they're perfectly happy to like facilitate either private security heavy type people breaking in or else do it themselves um and like yeah sir they certainly didn't quote any kind of law or any any lawful authority that they had for doing that but on 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 the day they sort of just they had a fairly hands off approach apart from all the pushing they were doing they they were basically just pushing people away supporters who arrived to prevent them from getting near the door like at this point it was just like sounds of like smashing glass like they were just hitting the door again and again with sledgehammer and they didn't appear to care that there was people behind it who they could injure um and it took them quite a while to get in but eventually they like smashed the door into ribbons and one of the, one of the people jumped inside and uh, at that point it was kind of more or less all over they they, they sort of they, they pretty much immediately started demolishing the house um they they even at one point when they're still trying to get um into the door or into the house, the Garda um clearly state that hey Mr Rabbit is an injured party and then um one of the occupants says okay great he's an injured party I'm apparently the aggressor party that would seem to be a civil matter as between two private parties and therefore we like the garda don't have to be here we are waiting a court, a court summons but the garda did not care at all about that and just went in which is not surprising you know the guard is acting acting as the enforcers of fucking private interests you know it's not at all surprising the so just in terms of the people like there were how many people were living in the house prior to the occupation? Um, there were between five and seven people living in the house. Okay, so I mean those five to seven people suddenly found themselves with nowhere to live on, literally no notice at all. Uh, they were just yeah. turfed out with well the amount of time it took to break through the door essentially. Yeah, and then directly after the workers, um, I mean the 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 guard told us to to take our stuff out, which we did. And as we're taking our stuff out of the house, the workers are demolishing mm. uh, the house, are breaking the windows, are um, breaking the walls inside that like divide the rooms, are breaking the exterior and parts of the house, are just going to town on the house. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, get, uh, deliberately making it uninhabitable. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, okay, well, we've, we'll be able to see a lot of that on the video, or you'll have already have been seen it. Uh, thanks. To view the video recorded during this eviction, go to youtube.com slash user slash WSM Ireland or www.wsm.ie.